Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. Uh, today we've got a little different style of a locomotive, one I haven't shown on the channel too much, and that would be the 200 series Alco diesels. So this one here is the 205, and this one here is the 202. Let's get them in the light there a little bit. There we go. All right. So uh, the problem with these two locomotives is they, <clears throat> when the power is applied to the track, they'll move quite jerkily across the track yes they are a couple of jerks and uh, we're gonna have a look inside and see what's going on now these two are very simplistic inside so there's really not a whole lot that uh, we're gonna have to investigate but I have seen on a lot of the Lionel boards on Facebook and stuff like that that people do have a lot of problems with these types of uh, trains so let's crack them open have a look see what's going on and fix them up and get them running again Let's start. So here we are back on the bench. We got a test track set up. We've got the 205 and the 202 uh, Alco diesels ready to put on the track just to see what it is they're actually doing. So since they both have the same problem, I'm just going to uh, start with the orange one and show what it does. So when we apply power, a lot of buzzing. Switch direction. Nothing. Not even really moving. Oh, there we go. So, as you can see, it moves very, very poorly um, and seemingly only in one direction right now. So, let's get this shell off, have a look inside, see what's going on, and see if we can get her going. Okay, so for all of these Alco diesels uh, of this 200 series and the ones that look very similar, it's very simple to remove the shell. There's no screw at the front. There's only one at the back. And then this little tab right here that slides in and out. And we're going to get our blue tray for our screws. So it's just a Phillips head screwdriver. One screw in the back. Take that out, up, and then slide out, and there we go, the shell is off. So we're just going to keep that off to the side right now, and we're going to have a look at the insides here. So this, obviously there's the motor, and there is a directional control, but this isn't like an E-unit, like the uh, regular trains you've been seeing on here. But the first thing that I am going to do right off the bat is I'm going to take the top off here, have a look at the commutator and the armature, make sure that's all clean and free of dirt, and uh, then we will start investigating the rest of the locomotive. So let's get ourselves a slot screwdriver and start taking this apart. Let's get a smaller slot screwdriver so it'll actually fit in the screw and then start taking this apart. There we go. That's better. So this is just the grounding tab. So we'll get this out first. And we can actually keep all that together, so that's nice. And there's the second, we'll put that in our dish. Now again, we got the brushes here, so when you lift this off, be careful. They don't pop out and roll off the bench. And you get lose them. And the motor came right out with it. All right, so. That is pretty dirty. It's got a lot of use in it, and the, the slots here aren't too bad. A little bit of surface rust starting on the, these here. So first thing I'm going to do right off the bat is give that a wipe down, of course, with the green scotch pad. So we're just going to get a little bit of the surface rust off of here, polish those up a little bit. It's looking good already my little toothpick tool here and we're just going to drag it through these slots to make sure they are clean and clear all right so right away too what i'm noticing when i took this motor out there's no grease on this at all and i'm gonna have a look down in here there's our brushes I'll just pull those out so i don't lose them 
this is pretty bone dry in here. So I'm thinking right away that lack of lubrication might be a big problem about why this isn't moving so smoothly. So while we got all of this apart to this degree, I'm going to get some grease down in there. So I'm just using bearing grease, automotive bearing grease, because it's what I got. So there we go. We'll just shoot some of that in there. I'm going to get my screwdriver. I'm going to work that around the gear a little bit better. I'm liking that. And there we go. And that'll work itself around in there, so that'll be excellent. I see that <clears throat> these are pretty dry as well. So I'm going to do the same thing and just put plenty on it right there. Looks good. Move them around. And that'll help spread the grease around. Work that around. And I'm also looking at these axles. And they look pretty... They're dry too. And I can feel that there's quite a bit of resistance in these wheels when I spin them. They're not so free. And I see a lot of dirt on them as well. So since you can't take this apart... This assembly doesn't come apart. Because as you can see, it's riveted to this piece of the frame here and there's the rivet on the top so you can't dismantle these like you can some of the others so what i'm going to do is i am actually going to use a penetrating oil to spray on that axle let it work itself in and this is what i'm using here i use this stuff called release all and i found this at um a canadian tire which is kind of like an o'reilly's sort of thing i guess it's like a wd-40 but uh, my auto mechanic friends really swear by this stuff so they suggested me picking it up and it actually has worked really well on a lot of applications automotive and for these trains so i'm just going to shoot some of this in here let it work down into those brass bushings that are in there And I'm going to work this around for a bit. And I'm probably going to hit it a couple more times throughout the video just to make sure everything is working free. And we're back. Okay, so we've got all the penetrating oil soaking in there. And we've got the gears all greased up. Everything's looking good there. So I am going to drop this assembly back in here. And to get it to fit in and engage with the gears, you just kind of spin the wheels a little bit and everything will line up and then down it goes. Just got to make sure to get it in straight, which this is not. Come on, you little devil. All right, there we go. That's in. Now, also, I'm going to put a little drop of oil and let it run down this shaft onto this washer because that runs along in there. And a lot of you guys probably have sewing machine oil or the three-in-one oil available to you. It's perfectly fine. I don't want to use too much because I don't want it to get onto these copper plates. So we've got that in. Our wires are all still connected. I'm going to give the brush holders here just a quick little wipe. To make sure that they're clean and even though this q-tip is dirty it's still going to serve its purpose perfectly fine so what i'm going to do in this case is i'm just going to get myself some contact cleaner and spray the contact cleaner on the q-tip just a quick little one and then just work that in here so for you subscribers that watch the channel very regularly, you'll notice, you know that I don't use a lot of the chemical very often. But in this case, this one was so dry, and I can see a lot of buildup of old grease, I am going to use the chemicals just to loosen things up a little bit better here. I don't usually put this much oil on this stuff either, but once again... It's all just because it was really dry. It clearly hadn't been lubed in quite some time. So why not just give it that extra little bit? So I'm going to clean some of the excess carbon off of the brushes here. 
drop those back in. The springs are still good. There's still a decent amount of brush material here. They're not quite the nubs I've seen on some of the other trains. So that'll work out well. And now we're going to put the whole thing back together. And down we go. Perfect. Okay, and I'm going to line the brushes up a little bit better into those springs. So I'm going to push this down, give that a twist, and then you can see the spring just clipped back into place. And there we go. So now I'm going to start putting this back together. That's one, and here's the other. There we go. Okay. So that's all clean and that's back together. Now I'm not worried about this motor at all. And we've got plenty of lubricant down on these wheels. Now, of course, the motor is in. We've got a little more resistance. But it's definitely moving a lot freer than it was when we first opened it up. So once again... I'm going to hit these with some more penetrating oil. Like that. Just let that soak in real good. Also work it in with my hands. So we'll get this part here. Don't forget that one. So this one's going to be quite oily right off the bat. It's going to kick a lot of oil around, but that's okay. We can always wipe off the excess. It seems to get hung up at one spot, too. The gears all looked fine. There's no missing teeth, so I'm not sure what's up with that. All right, let's wipe off a little bit of the excess. And just for fun, let's throw this on the track, as it is, without doing any more to it, and see if that has made any bit of difference. All right, so we have our Lionel Union Pacific 202. Uh, we've just cleaned out the motor, cleaned out the brushes, the brush holders, and we have applied some fresh grease onto these gears. Let's put it on the test track and see if that has made any bit of improvement on how this runs. Still no movement there. Nothing going. Ah, so here's a broken wire. There we go. Now we're getting some action. So I'm going to re solder this wire on. And I can feel how stiff and dry this is. So the fact that it broke off there doesn't really surprise me. Again, this is one of the things that we, I come across quite a bit with original wiring, which, I mean, this might not be original, but it's definitely old. So we're going to attach this back on. I'll heat up, get my soldering iron heated up, and then we'll see what we got once we put that wire back on. So while we're waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, we're going to have a word from our sponsor. Yes, I finally have a sponsor, and today's sponsor is me. Three, four. Okay, so we've got that loose wire fixed up. We put it back onto the terminal it's supposed to be. Soldered it. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say we soldered it. And now I'm going to put power back to the track. And let's see if that helped it at all. Well, it started to move better on its own. So that's looking promising. Backwards is still a little iffy.
The forwards work much better. So as you can see, just by adding a little bit more grease and um, putting some penetrating oil on these axles, it has already freed it up quite a bit, at least to allow it to move in the forward motion. So what I'm going to do too is I'm going to have a look at this direction unit. It's looking pretty good. It's pretty clean. I don't see any issues with it, but maybe it wouldn't hurt to hit it with a little bit of contact cleaner, free that up a little bit, and once again, I'm going to put some more penetrating oil on these axles, make sure this stuff is really getting in there, and loosening up all of that, because I really think that was the problem. This had just dried out and the motor just can't move it anymore. A little more penetrating oil. And also some metal flakes in there that we don't want to have. So the more I work this in, the easier it gets. That's for sure. And it also looks like we've got a little oiling spot down here that I just noticed as well. So maybe we will do that. Except I will use the penetrating oil right here. work that in also. Now that we've worked some more oil in there, I, oh that's right I wanted to put contact cleaner on this. So let's get some contact cleaner on the directional switch. Shoot some down here, shoot some on this contact like that. That's looking pretty clean already. But what I am going to do is with the green pad, and this, this here piece is plastic, so be very careful with it. Uh, I've had a couple of the MPC era ones where this just breaks off so easily because the plastic is so old, it's so worn out. So I'm just going to wipe that contact to make sure that's good. That solder looks good. And what have we got there? Flip the switch over. I'm just going to lightly kind of try to brush off this little contact bit in here. I'm really thinking though the problem has nothing to do with the switch itself because it's working just fine. It's flipping back and forth like it should. I believe it's more of a gummy motor. Let's put it back on the track now and see what happens. stuff out of the road. I'm helping it along in the other direction because I can feel the motor trying, but it's still kind of gummed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the motor apart one more time, have a look at what's going on inside here and uh, maybe put some more grease down in the main shaft because maybe it just doesn't have enough and then we'll throw her back on the track again and see if that makes any difference because really it's getting power the power is getting to the motor that's no problem it's just the motor can't move the wheels so that is really telling me that the problem is all back here Okay, so we have applied more lubricant down into the motor, uh, more lubricant onto the grease. We've been working it back and forth. I push it along the track and really get it working in here. And it is moving much freer. So I am confident that we are heading in the right direction. So I'm gonna put some power to this and see what we get. right away still the reverse is the problem here so i'm feeling that as as i apply power in the reverse direction and i push down on the motor itself that little bit of help helps it move much freer so there is still some binding going on down in there i just think we just got to work work all that lubricant through these gears 
because that seems to be the only thing that's holding this locomotive up from running. So I brought the 202 back on the bench because um, it's still not running right. I'm not happy with this at all. Uh, I don't know if it's just a terrible motor because these things are so cheap or, or what. Um, there's no obstructions anymore underneath. It's well lubricated. Uh, I can spin it in one direction by hand really freely, and it's not a problem. But putting power to this motor, nothing happens again after I did have it running. So I'm going to try something else. And what I'm going to do is I've got this extra brush plate. And this is actually the same type that was on here. And I'm going to put this one on. I'm going to swap these two out and see if that makes a difference at all. Okay, I'm going to hit that with some oil because it looks like it needs it. And there. And a little bit there. <clears throat> Let's get that track back, put some power to it, see what happens. Got the transformer hooked up, we've got our new brush plate back on. Everything is soldered back up again. Let's apply some power and see if we get any results. Wow, that was nice. Let's engage the reverse. Still doesn't like reverse. Just doesn't like the reverse. Forward. Loves forward. Not a big fan of reverse. I'm going to take it off the track and apply some power to it. I'm just curious to see if it does anything different if it's not under a load on the track. Interesting. Okay, so one thing I'm, I'm going to try uh, to do is I'm going to swap out these brushes. Moment of truth. What do we got? We got nothing because my wire became unhooked. What do we got? So what's been happening so far is we've cleaned out the motor on the Lionel 202. We have replaced actually this whole cover. This is the original cover that was on there. Replaced one of the brush holders. Obviously I had to resolder everything. Um, everything's been lubed. Everything's been freed up. We've checked the two position um, reverse unit. And still, when we put this on the track, it just won't go. But off the track, it does. However, I did find something that might be a key to this problem. So if, we're, if we apply the power, right away, you can see it's trying, but it just can't get itself moving. However, I'm going to apply some pressure to this piece here and what this is is the actual shaft the whole armature commutator part pivots right in here and see the difference when I apply some pressure on this and I'm going to push a little bit up and over okay and you'll see what happens with it
So just by pushing it up just a little bit, it must have put that shaft in alignment so the whole thing runs much better. Actually runs perfectly. So I'm going to switch the direction now. Just like that. Apply the power. Nothing. Just that little adjustment puts the shaft back in alignment. It must be just jamming up in the gears because the shaft's not sitting true. Now that's interesting. If I Once that's engaged, that's it. It's good to go. When it stops though, if I was to start it again, it should bind itself up again. And it does. So just that little bit of pressure puts everything back in alignment. So, the question now that I know what the problem is, I bet if I fix this into position better, when this goes on the track, we should have no more problems. And that is probably why this motor was replaced with this design. That cover is no longer there. There is a bronze sleeve in here that acts as like the bearing shaft. This here just has a small ball bearing in it. So they replaced this design with this one. Uh, I can't swap these motors out, however, though, because this isn't wired up to handle this um, two position switch. So what we got to try to figure out and what I just might try to do, if this is just a, just a wee bit loose, I might just get some pliers and just try to squeeze this all back in and maybe hold it a little bit tighter because really that's my only option because you can't take this thing apart to do anything else with it. So let's give that a try. I'm just squeezing this a little bit tighter and hopefully, actually that one, well that front end was loose. Maybe. That will be enough so that this will take off on its own. Let's see. Hook the power back up. So that's forward. Let's try the backwards. The direction that it just does not want to go in. There we go. A little bit of hesitation, but it actually got moving. So, maybe by tightening up this bottom, we have actually solved the problem. Let's try it one more time. Now, let's put it on the track and see if we can actually get it to run. So, we know it runs when it's off the track, forwards and backwards. Let's see what it does when it's on the track. There's forward. Not being in alignment and it's jamming itself up in there. If I tighten this up even more and it was moving it towards the front of the locomotive to bring it in better alignment. So let's pinch it again. Hold it in place a little bit better here without cracking it. That would be not good. Counterproductive, I would say. Tightened up a little bit more. Let's see if that helped even more. And it did. Well, I'll be... I'll be dipped, as Vice Grip Garage would say. We have it fixed. Smooth as butter. Look at that. No problem at all. So the whole problem boiled down to this cover being loose and the shaft running in the motor being 
offset and jamming itself and not being able to run. So now I can put the shell back on. Now I can say that this job is complete and is a success and we will have a perfectly functioning 202 Alco Union Pacific. Just like new. All right, guys, so that is it. It's fixed. That was the fix for it. Centering the uh, lower brace bracket holder, whichever, for the, the armature shaft to ride in. And all is good with this Union Pacific world. So, so we're going to run 202 around a couple laps. Then we're going to switch it up, put 205 on. 205 was another successful um, repair. Uh, not the same alignment issue as this one, but definitely a dried out set of gears. Lack of lubricant is what kept him from going. So let's just fire this guy around the track and see how well he fares. So there we have it, the um, repair and lubrication and bringing back to life two 200 series Lionel Alco diesels. Um, still not my favorite style of diesel, still not my favorite Lionel, but you know, it was a lot of fun getting these back running again and I'm very happy that they're going to be put back on the track and not parted out or thrown out. So I call that a huge success, uh, a great discovery of why the um, orange one especially wouldn't run. And I hope this guy, this helps you guys uh, with your repairs on your 200 series Alcos as well. And don't forget to do all of the YouTube stuff, hit the uh, like notification bell thingy, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Go check out the Patreon page. <clears throat> I would love to have your support to help me keep making these videos, uh, keep improving these videos. Also, please send in your comments and your tips. I love reading them, and I love the tips that get shared with the rest of the community. It just makes everything so much more enjoyable. Thank you very much for watching once again, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.